Hello everybody, it's Chris Clainsworth of course and I'm um, so delighted to be with you today and to share with you God's Word. Welcome to Apostolic Touch. Um, we are focusing on the speakings of the Lord, we are focusing on the Word of the Lord and over the last few sessions I have been talking to us about spirit time and life in the Spirit. So um, I want you to if you're joining us today for the first time into this message, why don't you go back into our broadcast over the last few weeks and then uh, you listen to them again and download those messages, listen to them again, so that what I'm saying today will, 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 will help you um, to understand a little bit better uh, what I'm talking about in this particular session. Now, over the last few couple of sessions, I've been talking to us about how um, the what spirit time is and I spoke to us about how the cloud um, how the cloud in the Old Testament in the book of Numbers chapter 9 how the cloud was a symbolic picture of the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit and how the people of God moved only when the spirit how uh, people of God moved only when the cloud moved and so this is an indication of how God wants us to live our life moving from the desert to our destiny by the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And so I spoke to us about that. And in the previous session, I spoke to us about what spirit time is. And spirit time is exactly that. Spirit time is the time when the Holy Spirit wants things to be done. Spirit time is a time where the Holy Spirit one chooses something to happen. Spirit time is spirit time is life in the spirit life in the holy ghost in other words your whole life your whole being is encapsulated by the moving and the inspiration and the guidance of the holy spirit the bible says galatians 5 25 if we live in the spirit let us also walk in the spirit and so we spoke about how spirit time is being guided and led by the spirit how spirit time is um, the Lord leading and guiding you into the direction that you must go. We spoke about what spirit time is and how spirit time is real time. In other words, it's happening now. It's, it's, it's now. It happens now. When is spirit time? It happens now. The Bible says, now the spirit speaks. The Bible says now there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh but after the Spirit. So when you walk after the Spirit, you walk after the Spirit of God, and you follow the leading of the Spirit of God, and you are, you are, in, you are filled with the Holy Spirit, it you moves you into the now. It moves you into present tense. It sets you free from condemnation. And then we spoke about... How the, the Bible says now the time is when true worshipers will rise up and they will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. True worshipers, spiritful worshipers, those will rise up now. The Bible talks about how in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17, now the Lord is that spirit. Spirit time is ease. you got to hear what I'm saying. Spirit time is present. Spirit time is something that happens now at this moment it's spirit time is current it's always happening now it is like the <clears throat> like when you do an eft you know uh you do an eft and uh, a normal eft if you do from one bank to a different bank takes about three three to five days can't take more for that money to reflect but when you do a real time eft or a, an immediate eft um, on your statement, it will show real time. In other words, it happens now. That money is sent from one account to the other, and that money is available immediately. It's real time. So when we talk about spirit time, it is just like that. It happens in real time. It happens now. And this is where God wants to move you and I to. This is where God wants you and I to live in, in a time that is real time, a time that is not a later time, not a later date, not a post-dated date, not a post-dated time, but a time that's happening now. Spirit time is also, uh, the Bible says, where the Spirit is. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, where the Spirit of the Lord is, 
there is liberty. You see, the word where is reference to a place. It's reference to a place, to someone, to something where the Spirit is. And what you and I need to know is the Holy Spirit lives in you and I. The Holy Spirit is present in you and I, like you and our lives right now. The Holy Spirit is present. He's current. He's reference. He lives within our bodies. The Bible says that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so the Israelites were under the pillars of cloud and fire. And as long as they were under the cloud, they had protection and provision. You see, when they were under the cloud, they, were, they had no one to fear. When they were under the cloud, there were no threats from the enemy. They were at liberty. Are you hearing me today? When they were under the cloud, they had no one to be afraid of because they were at liberty. When they were under the cloud, there was no threats from any enemies. They were in liberty. When they were under the cloud, they had no disagreements as to when they must march. They were at liberty because the Spirit set them at liberty. The cloud moving of the cloud set them at liberty. When they were under the cloud, there were no debates and arguments and quarrels amongst them because they were under the cloud. They were where the Spirit is. Are you hearing me today? When we talk about they were in liberty, they had no trouble at all because they were under the cloud. And this is where God wants you to come, where the Spirit of the Lord is. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is no fear in your life. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, you are free from the threats of the enemies. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is no disagreements as to when you must march. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's no debates and arguments and quarrels. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You see, <clears throat> when they were under the cloud, they didn't need to send any spies to check out the land, to go out ahead of them. They didn't send anyone to see the readiness of the land because the Holy Spirit, they were under the cloud. The Holy Spirit knew what to do, when to do, how to do it, and where to do it. So they were at liberty. They had no need of pioneers to clear the way because they were under the cloud. Are you hearing me today? They were at liberty. And today you are listening and you are hearing this message and you are hearing the word of the Lord and you are saying to me, man of God, I want to come to this place. Well, then you have to come to the place where the spirit of the Lord is, that spirit time where the spirit is, where the Holy Ghost is. They had no need of officers to mark out the camp where they were staying. The cloud did all of this for them. The pillar of cloud and the, and, and the pillar of fire did all of this for them, kept them, preserved them, placed them in a position of liberty. When was the last time that you had this kind of liberty? When was the last time you had this kind of freedom? When was the last time you had this kind of emancipation that is by... Hello everybody, it's Chris Clainsworth of course and I'm um, so delighted to be with you today and to share with you God's Word. Welcome to Apostolic Touch. Uh, you've got to hear what I'm saying. Spirit time is present. Spirit time is something that happens now at this moment. It's spirit time is current. It's always happening now. It is like the, <coughs> like when you do an EFT, you know, uh, you do an EFT and uh, a normal EFT, if you do from one bank to a different bank, takes about three, three to five days, can take more for that money to reflect. But when you do a real-time EFT or a, an immediate EFT, um, on your statement it will show real-time. In other words, it happens now. That money is sent from one account to the other and that money is available immediately. It's real-time. So when we talk about spirit time, it is just like that. It happens in real-time. It happens now. And this is where God wants to move you and I to. This is where God wants you and I to live in, in a time that is real time. A time that is, not a later time, not a later date, not a post-dated date, not a post-dated time, but a time that's happening now. Spirit time 
is also, uh, the Bible says, where the Spirit is. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You see, the word where is reference to a place. It's reference to a place, to someone, to something, where the Spirit is. And what you and I need to know is the Holy Spirit lives in you and I. The Holy Spirit is present in you and I, like you and our lives right now. The Holy Spirit is present. He's current. He's reference. He lives within our bodies. The Bible says that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. And so the Israelites were under the pillars of cloud and fire. And as long as they were under the cloud, they had protection and provision. You see, when they were under the cloud, they, were, they had no one to fear. When they were under the cloud, there were no threats from the enemy. They were at liberty. Are you hearing me today? When they were under the cloud, they had no one to be afraid of because they were at liberty. When they were under the cloud, there was no threats from any enemies. They were in liberty. When they were under the cloud, they had no disagreements as to when they must march. They were at liberty because the Spirit set them at liberty. The cloud moving of the cloud set them at liberty. When they were under the cloud, there were no debates and arguments and quarrels amongst them because they were under the cloud. They were where the Spirit is. Are you hearing me today? When we talk about they were in liberty, they had no trouble at all because they were under the cloud. And this is where God wants you to come, where the Spirit of the Lord is. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is no fear in your life. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, you are free from the threats of the enemies. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is no disagreements as to when you must march. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's no debates and arguments and quarrels. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You see, <clears throat> when they were under the cloud, they didn't need to send any spies to check out the land, to go out ahead of them. They didn't send anyone to see the readiness of the land because the Holy Spirit, they were under the cloud. The Holy Spirit knew what to do, when to do, how to do it, and where to do it. So they were at liberty. They had no need of pioneers to clear the way because they were under the cloud. Are you hearing me today? They were at liberty. And today you are listening and you are hearing this message and you are hearing the word of the Lord and you are saying to me, man of God, I want to come to this place. Well, then you have to come to the place where the spirit of the Lord is, that spirit time where the spirit is, where the Holy Ghost is. They had no need of officers to mark out the camp where they were staying. The cloud did all of this for them. The pillar of cloud and the, and, and the pillar of fire did all of this for them, kept them, preserved them, placed them in a position of liberty. When was the last time that you had this kind of liberty? When was the last time you had this kind of freedom? When was the last time you had this kind of emancipation that is by the Spirit of God? You see, when you come to Spirit time, life in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will bring these blessings upon your life where there's no fear in your life, where where there's no threats from the enemies. The Bible says, no weapon that is formed against you will prosper. And every tongue that arises against you shall you shall condemn. You see, when you move into spirit time, there's no threats from the enemy that can harm you. When you move into spirit time, there's no disagreements as to when things must happen because it must happen at the timing of the spirit. There's no debates and there's no arguments. There's no quarrels. Why? Because you are under the cloud. There's no real trouble because the cloud sorted out all the trouble for them. And the Holy Spirit wants to sort out all troubles in your life are you hearing me today when you move into spirit time and you move into the time of the spirit these are the blessings that can come upon your home 
come upon your life, come upon your ministry, come upon your church and begin to expand the borders of your life and begin to expand your territory as you move into spirit time. Just imagine what blessings this people had. Just imagine the kind of, of, of preservation they lived under the cloud. If God could do it for them, God can do it for you. If God can bring them to the place of this kind of freedom, this kind of liberty, this kind of emancipation, God can do it for you. And the Holy Spirit wants to bring you to this kind of blessings that will encapsulate your life and begin to move you into the next season where God wants you to be. Uh, know as you're listening, you are ready to move. You are ready to go. There is a timing called spirit time that is ready for you to move you into the next phase of your life. Now I wanted to move. I want to talk to you today about the requirements for spirit time. Today I want to, I want to, I want to talk to you about the requirements. What do I require? What do I need to do to step into spirit time? What do I need to do to step into the timings of the Spirit, to life in the Spirit? The Bible tells me in the book of uh, uh, Numbers chapter 9 verse 30, the Bible says that um, it was, was when the cloud was a few days upon the tabernacle, according to the commandment of the Lord, they abode in their tents, and according to the commandment of the Lord, they did journey. The first thing you got to do to move into spirit time is you must obey the word and the spirit. You must obey the commandment and the moving of the spirit. The Bible says the cloud stayed at the commandment of the Lord and the cloud moved at the commandment of the Lord. And so the commandment is the word of the Lord. And so what you and I need to do to come into and moving into spirit time, the word and the spirit works together. You must come where you obey the word and obey the spirit. You see, because you must know that the word works with the spirit and the spirit works with the word. The Word never works without the Spirit, and the Spirit never works without the Word. I got to say that to somebody again. You got to understand that the Word works with the Spirit, and the Spirit works with the Word. The Word does not work without the Spirit, and neither does the Spirit work without the Word. You, wherever you see the Word, the Spirit of God is joined in that Word. Wherever you see the Spirit, the Word of God is joined in that Spirit. And you and I must come to the place where we obey the Word and the Spirit of God. The Bible says in John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3, In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Verse 3, And all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. Then the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 6, Who also made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter killeth, but the Spirit gives life. You see, this is what God wants us to do. That we come and bring the balance and we, we believe and we obey God's word and we obey the, and we obey the Spirit of God. We obey the, move, the, the, the speakings of God and we obey the movings of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4, the Apostle Paul says, My speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit of power. The Apostle Paul, he operated in the balance of the Word and the Spirit. The Apostle Paul found a balance where he operated in the balance of the Word and the Spirit. He didn't have more Word than he had more Spirit. He didn't have more Spirit than he had more Word. He had the balance of the Word and of the Spirit. And you and I must come to this place where we have an understanding and an obedience to the Word of God and to the Spirit of God. The Word of God works jointly with the Spirit. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter 1, And God said, let there be light. And God said, and God said. And the Bible says, And the Holy Spirit moved upon the face of the waters. 
Therefore, I want you to know when the word of God is present, the Holy Spirit is present. When the Holy Spirit is present, the word of God is present. And you must be able to obey both the word and the spirit. The Bible says, uh, uh, the Bible says in the next key that you and I need to have when we are going to move into spirit time. Not only must we obey the word and obey the spirit, but we must also come to the place of constant readiness. Constant readiness. You got to be ready constantly. You have to be ready all of the time. The Bible tells me in the same book of Numbers, chapter nine, verse twenty-one. And so it was, when the cloud abode from even unto the morning, and that the cloud was taken up in the morning, that they journeyed, whether it was by day or by night, the cloud was taken up and they journeyed. You see, the Israelites were always ready to stay, and they were always ready to move. Their bags were always packed. They were ready to stay, and they were ready to move. They lived in a state of readiness. They lived in a constant, perpetual state of being prepared. They lived in a constant state of knowing that at any moment now, the Holy Spirit can move. At any moment now, the cloud can shift. And I got to be ready. Their mental picture was, and their mental ascent was, I got to be ready when the cloud moved. I can't, I can't be unprepared. I got to be ready in my mind. I got to be ready in, ready to go. My bags got to be packed. I can't unpack everything. I've got to be ready. So when the cloud goes, I can go with it. They had to be in constant readiness to march upon a very swift warning. They had to oblige to move on at the time of the cloud or what we call spirit time. And if you and I are going to move into spirit time, if you and I are going to move into the timings of the spirit, if you're going to move there, you must be ready to move and you must be ready to stay. That you must be ready to move and you must be ready to stay. You must be ready to move forward and you must be ready to stay in a constant position. Too many people that I have seen over the years are unprepared. They are not living in a state of readiness. They are not living in a state of being prepared. They are not ready for spirit time. Too many people are not ready for the timings of the spirit. And I submit to you today that there are times when the spirit wanted you to move, but because you were not ready, you missed out on what God could have done in your life. Are you hearing me today? I submit to you that there were times when the Spirit of God wanted to shift you. But because you weren't ready, the Holy Spirit, you had to wait until the next time. And because you weren't ready, you had to stay where you are. I'm speaking to a people right now. I'm speaking to someone that may have missed the timings and missed the Spirit of God. Because you were not ready to go when the Holy Spirit said you must go. The Holy Spirit is always ready. I have learned this throughout my life. I've seen it through the Word. The Holy Spirit is always ready. The Holy Spirit is always prepared. But we are often not prepared as the Holy Spirit is. And you have to be, you have to come out of the state of lethargy. You have to come out of the state of laziness. You have to come out of that state of demotivation. You got to come out of that state of unenthusiasm. You got to come out of the state of being lethargic and break yourself loose and become ready when the cloud moves. Become ready for the moving of the Spirit. Become ready for the timings of the Spirit. The Bible says you must be ready day and night. Listen to me. When the cloud moved at night, these people had to be ready. When the cloud moved that day, they had to be ready. And the question I have for you is, how ready are you for the moving of the Spirit? How ready are you for the timing of the Spirit? How ready are you for Spirit time in your life? How ready are you for when the Spirit wants to move you to the next season of your life? How ready are you for the next time that the Holy Ghost comes to shift you into your destiny? destiny the bible tells me john, john chapter 3 verse 8 the bible says the wind blows where it listeth 
and thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Holy Spirit. This verse is telling us how the Holy Spirit operates. The Holy Spirit works how He pleases. The Holy Spirit how works when He pleases. The Holy Spirit works where He pleases. The Holy Spirit deposits gifts as He pleases. The Holy Spirit leads as He pleases pleases the holy spirit deposits grace as he pleases the holy spirit is just like the wind nothing can stand in the way of him when he wants to move he will move when he wants to shift he will shift when he wants to go he will go and this morning and this afternoon and this season of your life how ready are you for this moving of the spirit how ready are you for the timings of the spirit so that when the holy spirit wants to shift you are you ready to shift with him are you ready to move with him are you ready to go with him are you ready to put your next foot forward because just like the wind the holy spirit cannot be stopped just like the wind the holy spirit cannot be hindered nothing can stand in the way of the moving of the holy ghost and there are some things now that the holy ghost wants to do in your life there are some things now that the holy spirit wants to shift in your life there are some things now that the holy spirit wants to begin to break in your life and nothing is going to be able to stand against the moving and the timings of the spirit nothing is a match for the holy spirit when the holy spirit moves you have to be ready when the holy spirit shifts, you have to be ready when the holy spirit moves you got to be prepared to move how ready are you to move how prepared are you to go how ready are you to shift just like the people in the desert you have to be ready to pack your bags and move to the next level. There are so many people in the Bible that gives us stories of those who were not ready for when God visited them, who were not ready for the movings of God when the Holy Spirit wanted to shift them. And as a result, they missed out on what God wanted to do. You have come too far to miss out on the season of God. You have come too far to miss out on the speakings and the timings of the Spirit. You have come too far or to miss out on this season. You have come too far to miss out on the Spirit's time, the timing of the Spirit, the timing that God wants to do something in your life. I am convinced in as I'm speaking to you today, I'm convinced as I am speaking to you this moment that there are certain people right now that is ready to move to a God wants them to go. The next thing that you have to do, the next thing that you have to be able to do is you to move into spirit time, you must not become comfortable where you are. The problem that we have is too many people become too comfortable where they are in their current position. Too many people are comfortable. Too many people have become complacent. Too many people have become, uh, have become um, content in where they are. The Bible tells me when this cloud was over the people, they had to move at the time when the cloud moved. There was no time for comfortability. There was no time to settle in. There was no time to, um, to, 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 to become content and relaxed. There was no time for that. And so if you are going to move into spirit time, you must not become comfortable with the surroundings that you are in don't become comfortable in the position that you are in right now don't become comfortable with the surroundings you are in right now don't become content with the surroundings that you are in the bible tells me in romans chapter 12 verse 2 and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind the message bible of the same verse says don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit into it without even thinking and this is what happened in many people's lives they fit into they become so well adjusted to the surroundings and to this to the environment around them that they begin to fit into their culture without even thinking 
You see, when you want to move into spirit time, spirit time will break the sphere of comfortability of your life. Spirit time will break the sphere of relaxation of your life. Spirit time will, will break the, the, the mentality of settling in of your life. People become so easily, so easily settled in. They can so easily settle in for a state of comfortability. You become comfortable with everything in your life, even if it's not what God wants you to have. I've seen how people just settle in with things, even if God does not want them to have it, yet they become comfortable in that space. I want you to know today that God is ready and God is prepared to make sure that you come to the next season of your life so that you can move into the season where God wants you to be. Listen to me today. I have, I have come to the end of this particular broadcast, but I want you to come and join me again next time as I'm going to conclude our message on spirit time, life in the spirit. Share this broadcast, share this message on your Facebook page, and I'm looking forward to come back and share with you again the word of the Lord. God bless you. God keep you. And God make his face to shine upon you. Until the next time.